One of our listeners sent us a article about how more and more women in America have decided to not have children. And now they're becoming more vocal about it, whereas before they were silent about it because society would kind of shun them and think that there's something either biologically or mentally wrong with them for not wanting to have children. I love this article. It was a really great article. And it talked about how a lot of marriages can be negatively affected by having kids. Of course, your financial situation can be neg negatively affected when you have kids. And um, it was a really good article, and it kind of showed the history of authors and women who have come out and said, you know, having kid not having kids is okay. In fact, it might be more selfish to have kids than to not have kids. Yeah, I, you know, as I hear about this article, mm -hmm. I'm reminded of a Pearl Jam song. Better man! <laughs> now, I know it's better man, not bitter man. Uh -huh. but, <laughs> but I love saying that. And I, it's a woman who wrote it, right? Yeah, but the, but and this... And I bet she doesn't have kids. Actually, she does have kids. Oh, uh, This talks about... Yeah, you definitely. Um, <laughs> I bet the, she doesn't like her kids. No, she loves her kids. <laughs> she loves her kids. But, uh, by the way, uh, this article talks about a lot of different psychologists, a lot of different authors, a lot of different people. So it's not focused on one person. But one author that keeps... Uh, is, like, I guess woven in and out of this article is a woman by the name of Corrine Mayer. Uh, she wrote a book called 40 Good Reasons Not to Have Children. Now she has two kids. One of them is 14, one of them is 11. And she says straight out, you, you know, sometimes I regret having children. Okay? Uh, that's got to feel great for the kids <laughs> to hear. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting because, of course, she's gotten a lot of hate ever since she's come out and said that. But... Um, that reminds me of that, uh, who was it, Ryan O'Neal, uh, that was like, oh, yeah, yeah, every one of my kids was a total mistake. If I had to do it over again, I, I wouldn't have any of the kids. Mm -hmm. They're all either in jail or should be, and I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> okay. Now, look, you're putting the kidding aside. Here are my serious thoughts on this. Look, I'm ambivalent on it because, uh, on the one hand, I totally hear that, man. Kids are pain in the ass, and it, it costs a tremendous amount of money. They take up all of your time, and a lot of times it's because... If people do it for selfish reasons. Now, look, everything's selfish because we're genetically driven to do it, right? So then you look at it and you go, oh, that's like a little me, and that little me is going to do better than I did. Yeah, yeah. And then you put all your hopes and dreams into the kids. It's not really quite fair, and they're not a little you. They're a different person. So I hear all those arguments, and I think they're very good arguments. So if somebody comes and says, I don't want to have kids, I say, rock it, man. I think you're going to have a great life. Right. Okay. And I think you'll have more money. You can go and, uh, and have great vacations and actually enjoy your life. I really respect that decision. Right. Now, on the other hand, people who do have kids, a lot of them will tell you the same thing because it's because again, we're biologically driven by this. They're like, there's nothing like it in the world, man. You have that kid. Right, right. And right, you right. love it so much that it outweighs all of that other stuff. And this article talks about that specifically, okay? And I'm not sure if I agree with this, but one psychologist said, yeah, people will say that. People who have kids will say it because society expects them to. No, no, no. I bet that's definitely the case for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I know for a fact that mm -hmm. it is not the case for a lot of people, too, that they love their kids to pieces. Mm -hmm. I mean, a great majority of parents. And they think there's nothing in the world like that feeling. And I'm not at all surprised by that. I mean, if you're going to have any biological imperative, it is to reproduce and your genes. And since the baby's such a pain in the ass, your genes have to make you love it so much that you still take care of it, even though it's such a pain in the ass. I mean, I hate to break it down in such biological terms, but it's definitely true. And so we, that, that's an overwhelming feeling, and it's a part of life. So I, I really respect both sides. If you want to have kids and go through all that, I think it's fantastic, right. and you're probably going to get a lot out of it. But if you don't want to go through all that, I really respect that decision, too. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be PC about it. I really see both sides of it, and I think you're going to have a great life either way. And look, and the thing with kids is, it's a bit of a risk because mm -hmm. some kids are trouble, right? Right, and you run into a troubled kid, then all of a sudden that equation is like, uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's part of life too. Don't get me wrong. Do you mean a kid that's like born with trouble, like maybe they have like a disability or something like that? Well, I, look, I keep it real on two fronts. One, sometimes you got devil children. Okay, <laughs> some children are of the devil, uh -huh. and <laughs> so they're going to run around and cause all sorts of trouble. It doesn't matter what you do, how great a parent you are, and what it is, etc. 
and that's just how some people are, sometimes you got problem children, okay? That happens from time to time, and sometimes it's the parents' fault, but a lot of times it's not, too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that's, that's a major headache. On the, and the other side of it is the keeping it real side. Look, it's, man, if you have a kid with autism, for example, mm -hmm. there are some parents who are sent down from heaven, and they are fantastic with kids like that, mm -hmm. and they go out of their way, and I, and I love them to pieces, and I think they're the greatest people on earth. Uh, but I think for a lot of people, that is really, really tough. And, yeah. you know, and to be able to cope with that, yeah, in the end, you're going to say, of course you love them, and of course, 9 out of 10, 99 out of, of 100 are not going to say they regret the kids. But that's tough, man. And that, for me, that changes the equation. That's a tough, tough thing to deal with. Mm -hmm. So that's a risk, man. It really is. Right. And some people can handle it better than others, and I'm not sure how great I would be at handling it. Uh, one last tidbit about this story, and I want to read this part because I found it to be the most interesting part of the entire article. Uh, so Daniel Gilbert, who holds a chair in psychology at Harvard and is the author of the 2006 bestseller Stumbling on Happiness, reports that childless marriages are far happier. He also re reports researchers have found that people derive from satisfaction uh, derive satisfaction from eating, exercising, shopping, napping, and watching television more than taking care of their kids. See, that's a little unfair. Because if you say, all right, what would you rather do? Watch Monday Night Football or take care of your kid? I'm going to vote Monday Night Football, right? But that's not the question. The question is, your kid grows up, for example, and like my nephew is going to college. Today he called me. We're having a discussion about his philosophy class. That's a fantastic feeling, man. I mean, maybe I'm goofy, but... And then he told me about how he hooked up with some girl. Oh, God, that makes me so proud. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And if you compare that with Monday Night Football, and especially if it's your own son, let alone my nephew who I'm enormously proud of, then you're going to take the kid. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But if you break it down day by day, you want to run after your kid or you want to you know, watch TV, well, of course TV's going to win. 